Hello and welcome to another edition of the Buncast, where myself, Craig, and Alan spout nonsense about films. Um, this week we're going to talk about our favourite Christmas films since we're in the season of. I'll just say the season of evil, but that doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> no, no, that's 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 absolutely correct on every level. Was that the was that the subtitle for Ghostbusters <laughs> too? No, that was surely not the season of evil family film. Was it not just the back? All oh, right, okay. <laughs> are, are you not thinking of season of the witch? No, or no, no, I'm not. I'm no, I don't know what I'm thinking about to be honest. Anyway, there was uh, no subtitle. Sorry, there was no subtitle. Was it not? No, it just says Ghostbusters Two. We are back. Have you? Are you? Are you this is. Ter- are you checking that? This is kind of turning into an Ian Lee sketch. Are you checking? Is it Ghostbusters Two? So, someone, yeah, someone Google it. I have. Yeah, uh, Ghostbusters Two: River of Slime. River of Slime. Who said that? Uh, IMDb. Yeah, that that is. The, I knew it had a subtitle. Just I don't think it got it over here. Hmm. That is awful. Well, it just says working type title. Surely it should have been Vigo the Carpathian. Oh, that would have been good. Ghostbusters 3, flogging a dead horse. No. Um, okay, so... According to this, it was also called SOS Phantoms 2 in Canada. <laughs> I love tangents. I really, really love tangents. It's SOS Phantoms 2? Yeah. Did I have Ben Affleck in it? No one got, um, that, no one got that reference to Phantoms then, no? No, was that... No, I've never seen that film. Oh. Wait, was he the the Phantom or? No, <laughs> that was Billy Zane. <laughs> Speaking of Billy Zane, where is Billy Zane? I I I have uh, I have no idea. I think he might be in my cupboard. <laughs> but he's probably playing the uh, local McDonald's. <laughs> what, what happened to him? I don't think anything ever did happen to him. <laughs> was that Maybe was that was that the <laughs> problem? <laughs> That was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think he peaked around about Back to the Future. Really? Around about Back to the Future? Yeah, he was one of Biff's gang. <laughs> was, was he the one wearing know. the... He, he wasn't... Was he the one wearing the 3D glasses? Uh, Are you alright? <laughs> <not. laughs> I thought it was going to be me that was coughing things up during this. I was just utilising my internal modem to to find out. <laughs> the good, uh, the good thing connecting is, to the uh, internet with your mind. Alan, I think he, I think he might have been. The good thing is now mm. we don't need to be concise. <laughs> <laughs> we no longer have to be concise. We can just talk about nonsense. I quite enjoyed the Phantom. <laughs> is, that, is that the one with the guy in the purple suit? I, yeah. I get it mixed yeah. up with... Yeah, um, Billy Zane. <laughs> I think I get it mixed up with the shadow. That was uh, one of Liam the Neeson, Baldwin's. Yeah, I think it was Alec Baldwin. Which one was Liam Neeson? Oh, it was Dark Man. Dark. Oh, yeah, Dark Christmas movies! <laughs> <laughs> are these not Christmas movies? They are now. Uh, yeah. Anything that's awesome. mentioned in the Bond cast is now a Christmas film. Excellent. We, we, we should talk about Cannibal Holocaust or something. Yeah, I was going to say something far more controversial than that, but I'm not going to. Um, so, right, we're going to... A Serbian film? No, no, it was really something quite shocking, but I stopped myself. I will have to say for anyone we're listening, I have, uh, I have drank a bottle of wine, so... Oh, dear Lord. There's snow down, <laughs> there was wine there. I was sitting thinking, I'm pretty bored. <laughs> I think that might be how alcoholism started. In fact, is this not how the shining started? <laughs> Snowed in, there's alcohol there. I think I'll have some. So we're going to talk about uh, Christmas films. and uh, Eventually. Eventually, yeah. Uh, Alan, over to you. What's a Christmas film that comes to mind for you that you, you quite like? Uh, die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sums you up, mate. Yes. No, it's uh, well, I mean, I think. Well, it's um, Alan indestructible. Was... <laughs> yes. Pretty much. Yeah, so, uh, I'm like Captain Scarlet. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I think it was uh, Andy called that one over on the forums that he, he was suggesting Die Hard. Now, I have to say, I think that's quite a good shout in a way because even though it's very, it's probably one of the best action movies to come out of the 80s, it's, it's also kind of 
you know, I obviously set at Christmas, and it's also quite a heartwarming film in a strange roundabout way. You know, I think it's um, possibly not something that you could watch with children, but you know, I think it's a good film to watch at Christmas because I think it uh, really brings people together, and you know, their their hatred of Alan Rickman. Yeah, really brings people together really? in a high rise Berlin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's a um, perfect festive entertainment, really. Was I know the second one was was set on Christmas Eve, wasn't it as well? I think it was. Yeah. Was, was the third one at Christmas time, or did they just go to? Uh, no, that the was of the summer. that was summer, yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, I don't think it. I don't know. A lot of people don't. Li- a lot of people just like to discount Die Hard to Die Harder. <laughs> I don't know. I thought the second one was all right. I think it's the second one's all right. It's got some good set pieces. Yeah, I, I liked it. I remember being completely shocked. Where I'm going to spoil something there. I remember being completely shocked at the the scene in the 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 back of the lorry. That sounds dodgy. Uh, with with the special ops troops that had been brought in, and they had this rookie with them. Oh yeah. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? I don't. I, 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 know I won't the, ruin I know it. The bit but you mean, actually, that, yeah, yeah. I remember watching that, that, that as a kid. Shocking. Terrified me. Yeah. It's like, what's going on? Actually, I agree with you. I think Die Hard, uh, very much at its heart, yeah, is. Is a Christmas film. Um, mm. Well, that's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, when you say a Christmas film, I mean, do you mean a film about Christmas, a film that is set at Christmas, or a film that you would watch at Christmas? I think just anything that you you associate with Christmas. Mm. Because it was like I, yeah. I was saying on the forums, wasn't I, that um, a lot of the films that I think about from Christmas aren't actually about Christmas or set at Christmas. Uh, they're just well, the, the just films the that were on the television when I was a kid, you know, mm-hmm. at Christmas time. Well, I mean, the, the BBC has a sort of yearly tradition of showing Indiana Jones at Christmas. Yeah. I mean, I think when a lot of people think about Christmas, they think about Indy. I know. Dressed as Santa. Mm. What about you? So, uh, Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I think it would be particularly appropriate if they just made that, you know, like a... You could actually have that in a Christmas card and just no time for love. Yeah. <laughs> Craig, are you here? Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I think you're right about the, the the Christmas thing. I mean, not not doesn't have to be a Christmas uh, themed movie. Essentially, I would say. I think it's definitely the time of the epic. Uh, Doctor Zhivago was on the other day. There, that's a good one. You know, mm. Gone with the Wind, that type of thing. I think people yeah. just like. It's, it's something to chew on at Christmas time. It doesn't even have to be particularly fantastic. I mean, let's not kid ourselves, right? Christmas Vacation is not a classic. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, it's well, Randy uh, Quaid. Randy, the <laughs> crazy man Quaid. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have a, an appendix session where we talk about Quaid and his, his antics. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> they need further enlightenment. But... Uh, no, f- for me, my a personal uh, holiday favourite would be, uh, and probably going to get slapped for saying this, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. I think uh, it's... Yeah, also known as Hot, hot Topic, the movie. Well, that's 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 the point I was making. Mm-hmm. I put a post on the forum about this. Now, I think it's time to reclaim it from mm. those eyeliner wearing, you know, those people that sit outside and just sort of mope around and... Oh, you're you know, so... What? You're being so bigoted against those that wear eyeliner. Da- damn my sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just it should be reclaimed, not as a cult thing for an alternative title. Mm. I think it is just a bona fide Christmas classic. That's what I'm trying to say. I think the, the style of animation, the, the, stop, the stop motion is, is pure. The design is clean. The songs are actually quite memorable. Mm. And I think it's just a great time. Now, the funny thing about that film is, is everybody thinks it's, what well, it's called Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, isn't yeah. it? But it's not directed by Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did, however, go on to direct uh, The Corpse Bride, another uh, stop animation film, which I didn't enjoy as much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've not actually seen that one. Um... Well, it's, you, mm. you would think that something in that style would be absolutely fantastic for Burton being so strong yeah. into the design elements, but uh, to me that film fell completely uh, flat. Really? But, the, but the Nightmare Before Christmas, I think, is quite an achievement in terms of uh, design and execution. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a fairly short film. I think it's just about 70 minutes long, mm. but it, it packs a punch. It's quite breezy, uh, and, it, and it's great fun. That's, that's my top pick. Can I, can, I, can I admit something to you? We had a topic on the forums about sort of films that you were ashamed that you hadn't seen. That you know, you really, if you're if if you're into film, you should have seen. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. I haven't seen it. Nightmare Before Christmas. And yeah. and and you you would think it would be something completely and utterly up my street, but it's one of those ones that like I've seen it on, and um, it's always it's weird. It's always been a film that has interested me, but I just I, I've never sat down to watch it. I think what's what's great about it. Sorry, Alan. Uh, I was just going to say I think it's on this week sometime. Well, perfect. I mean, like I say, it's a bright and breezy film, but it's the fact that it mm. occupies and straddles both the sort of Halloween elements and the Christmas elements. You, mm. you do get this thing where at the end of the year, there's this great big clash of these, you know, the, the celebration of evil forces and everything that's sort of dark. And then you get this sort of, you know, the, the inverse of that and everything's uh. happy and jolly. And The Nightmare Before Christmas seems to sit perfectly between the two. And it's a movie which you can enjoy at, at Halloween and that's uh, Christmas, but it's it's a perfect end of year film. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. What say you, Alan? Yeah, no, I think that's a, mm. quite a, a ringing endorsement. That you know, I'd be struggling to add anything to that. I mean, certainly, uh, I think stop motion animation is something that I would really love that we could see a bit more of that because I mean, these days with uh, all the you know work being poured into three D animation, it's something that it's very much the exception, which I think is a real shame because it's got. I think there's something in that that has more appeal, certainly to me. There's a kind of an endearing, handmade quality that you just don't get in, uh, you know, 3D graphics with that, and that's. It's something that I just feel like has not been exploited <clears throat> to its fullest potential. I think there's stuff that can be done with that that has not been done and should be done, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'd just like to see more in that style, really. I mean, you know, from Tim Burton or anyone else would care to I, give it a shot. I, I love um, uh, stop frame animation. I mean, we, we, I, again, mm. talking about... We, we had a, a section in the forum where we were talking about short films, and a lot of the ones that we were sort of getting from YouTube were uh, uh, stop motion. And I kept thinking about that one... Do you remember that one, or did you watch it, Alan, the Sandman? Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't actually see that one. He never watches um, anything I give him. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I... I'm, no, I will get around to it eventually. So. I'm a big a big fan of uh, of uh, that sort of style. I think that there is, there's there's something magical about stop mm. motion, and, and it's also kind of the endeavour of it, you know, the amount yeah, of time that's, that's and the artistry the... behind it. That's probably the reason that you know we don't we don't see a lot of feature films in that style just simply because of the amount of uh, man hours involved in producing it. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the other things I was going to mention just as a sort of similar stop motion thing that's quite often get at Christmas time is uh, the Wallace and Gromit series. Yeah. Particularly, I always think most of all of the wrong trousers is yeah, uh, probably cool. standout from there. I think that's just it's a, a perfect half hour really. You know, there's. Uh, there's really absolutely nothing bad I could say about it. It's just a, a, a you know a brilliantly crafted, really funny and quite heartwarming little film, which is again perfect for Christmas time. Yeah. The great thing about those films is that, like you say, you can see the artistry and mm. to, to such an extent in those films that you can actually see the the, the fingerprints on, ah, yeah. on, on the characters, which is mm. uh, magnificent. Or a mistake. <laughs> We'll clean that up with CG in a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, just like, CG, oh. CG. In fact, oh, we just CG my hands out of it. <laughs> we just keep my hands in, moving them around. I haven't, just CG them I haven't actually seen it, but did either of you see the one that Ardman made that was CG? I think it was flushed oh, away. Oh, flushed away, yes. Yeah, I read about that. Was, I never saw it. I think that's possibly the problem. That, you know, I get the feeling that not a lot of people did. But uh, I kind of thought it was interesting that it looked as though they'd been trying to replicate the style that they have in stop motion films, like claymation, uh, and take that into 3D in a way. Well, you know, CGI in a way, but I never actually, I never actually saw it, so I couldn't tell you how successful it was. Craig, Craig did, did you actually see it? Or? I've, I've seen, uh, bizarrely, the first 25 minutes of it. Oh. I don't know why specifically the first 25 <laughs> minutes of it, but I have. It's, uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh, mm. From what I could tell, 
what, this, what I don't really know what the story is. I think it's something to do. It's like it's about a toilet. Well, it's, 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 it's about, about a rat. rat that gets accidentally flushed. You know, yeah, I, just, I just guessed that from the title, but yeah, well, well done you. Yeah, but it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, like, it's like a rat. He's the king of the swingers or something like that. Mm. You know, he's he's, he's jungle he's, VIP. Yeah, he wears he wears a suit and he's you know he gets flushed away and you know haphazard encounters and I'm sure mm. it pans out very well for him. But uh, uh, no, it was it was something yeah like you say it was trying to re- replicate something which it's inherently not and I think that's mm. possibly it might have felt a lot of people like that film a lot of people say it's mm. quite good uh, certainly superior to some of the uh, uh, animal based stuff that DreamWorks has uh, been putting out for the last few years yeah. You know, oh. that, you know that thing where you get like a cast of animals and then just you know have them all wearing shades and a right uh, oh. a raised eyebrow and, yeah. and, and it's for your uh, entertainment. I'm kind of thinking probably Madagascar comes to mind, but I've never actually seen it. Oh god, there's hundreds of them. Yeah. There is there there is quite an abundance of them. Get, kind of things out. Getting back to to Christmas. Christmas films, movies. Right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to right now. If I had to pick one, right. It would be It's a Wonderful Life, which I, I want to talk about mm. in a minute, right? But it's been a while since we've mentioned Batman. <laughs> and Batman a, Returns. And a bun cast. Yeah. I, oh, that's, that's true, actually, because that is set, set at Christmas, isn't it? It's set at Christmas. But I, th- I, I might be wrong here, but I think the bizarre thing about Batman Returns is I think it was given a summer release. It was. It was indeed, yeah. <laughs> Famous <laughs> given a summer release. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> when you think of it, when you watch that film, because... It's probably one of the, the the films that most effectively captures the icy cold of, yeah. of this sort of season. And to release that in the summer was just well, incredible. It, it, it's funny because uh, when Batman came about, this, you're talking about the sort of the beginning of the sort of big tentpole summer action films. Yeah. And I, th- I think Batman Returns through Warner Bros. for a bit of a loop mm. uh, in the same... Because you never really got high-end releases at the end of the year yeah mm. they were always for the summer tent pole but now of course you get the you get the big rush for your like so your, your sort of may june july uh release well probably not so much may maybe july august but then mm. you get uh the big end of your splurge uh yeah. before the before the end of the uh, the oscars uh award window sort of falls and uh i think returns was a big nightmare for them and i think that's that's probably what prompted a big shift in fact uh, towards something a little bit more, you know, distributed across the year uh, slightly because there is there is dead periods when you get to sort of January, uh, January March when mm. all the all the I, dread gets. I just I, I just feel with that film that it was um <clears throat> it was it, it was a it was a it was a success. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And sure. in fact, at the time, it had like the, a, a record breaking weekend and it, uh, it made a, it made a lot it made money, but it you know notoriously is you know, for something that people thought was a sort of kids film or at least a young teenager, a film for young teenagers, it's notoriously dark and violent. And I don't know if, you know, <laughs> not that I'm saying you accept violence more at Christmas, but because of the whole tone, <laughs> because of the whole tone of the film, I'm wondering if it would have been uh, accepted a little bit easier at christmas just because of the, the the feel of it you know because it is you know it's all, all you know it's all uh snowy uh city landscapes and uh, skylines mm. and things like that throughout it you know and it's it's fantastic well and we probably shouldn't talk about this too much because we all know i just think this film's awesome did it not get quite a kind of critical kicking at the time as well oh yeah yeah it did but i think i think now it's I think now it's got a, it's got a real following. I think people, more and mm. more people are going back to it now and realizing that because the thing with Batman Returns and Craig Neen, you have talked about this to death, so I'm really sorry. Um, sorry. But uh, <clears throat> the thing with Batman Returns is that it explores the character of Batman through the other characters in the film. They all they all represent parts of his personality and how. He could have went in a certain way. You've got the Max Shrek, who um, famously named after the the actor that played uh, Count Orlock in Nosferatu. He um, he's the sort of a rich boy 
who abuses that power that comes with that. Mm. Uh, you know, Bruce Wayne is is, is a rich yeah, millionaire, and uh, then you've also got the Penguin as an orphan, but he's uh, um. and and so is Bruce Wayne, but Bruce Wayne uh, doesn't. Well, it becomes twisted to a degree, but he uses that to try and <clears throat> do something positive, whereas the the Penguin's character uh, just wants a bloodbath. Basically, he becomes incredibly twisted and. Uh, negative about it and then you've got Catwoman uh, Selena Kyle who uh, has the split personality and is in a lot of ways far out there she's allowed that split to destroy herself almost mm. whereas Bruce Wayne was, is able to <clears throat> somehow <clears throat> rein it in and I think you know let's say that, that I, I think People are realising that now when they watch the film because visually it was always just stunning. You know, it's it's incre- it's an incredibly uh, beautiful film. But I think now people are realising that uh, there's a lot more to it. You know, plus it's got one of the best scores I've ever heard. Yeah, that's, mm. that's enough for me. Someone else mentioned our Christmas film. Were you you were you going to talk about uh, It's a Wonderful Life or? Well, you well. Someone talk about another film first, and we'll get back to that. Alan, it's you. You're up now. You were talking about Bad Santa earlier on before we started recording. Well, uh, I, I feel that uh, you know Craig touched upon Christmas Vacation earlier on, and I feel I would just find myself at least a little bit in terms of that before we hit Bad Santa. But uh, I think that uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is one of these films which is again critically kicked and uh, possibly not, you know, unjustifiably so. But uh, I think that it's it, it's just quite a nice film to watch. It's like watching three episodes of a sitcom tacked end to end in a way. I think it's the sort of thing that you can just sort of dip in and out of, and it it's it's kind of it you know it has a lot of quite entertaining set pieces. Most famously with uh, Chevy Chase again, what happened to him? Uh, trying to pin up a load of Christmas lights in a fairly used fashion. Alan, yes. he's back. <laughs> Seriously. He was in Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, he was. Oh, right. oh yeah, I think I heard that, yeah. And I've I still probably, not seen that. I probably just spoiled the cameo for everybody, but oh. I don't care, because I, I, I was actually in the cinema, and when he came up on the screen, I actually did a sort of double take. <laughs> and it's the first time I've done a double take in a cinema. <laughs> I actually, when you're facing I, the screen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm, I'm sat there with my wife, and I go, that's Chevy Chase. And, and she can see, I, I actually reached the back of my seat and looked towards the audience. <laughs> go, Are you seeing this? And she grabs me That's and puts awesome. me back in the chair. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> he's, he's back, baby. Oh, that's, that's great. Caddyshack 3, you know, the gopher's revenge. <laughs> so, so, sorry I, to interrupt, I, I just had to uh, relay that information. No, no, it's, it's awesome on so many levels. Um, but no, no, it's, uh, I think it's just a sort of nice film that you can kind of dip in and out of, and it kind of produces uh, an entertaining little comedy about, you know, the, the experiences of family at Christmas that avoids kind of a lot of the usual pitfalls, you know, it's not overly schmaltzy or anything, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's just like, as I say, watching three episodes of a sitcom back to back, it's not I remember when you were, amazing, but... I remember when you were talking sorry? about it, Alan, and you were saying that you felt that, um... There were a lot of problems with the second one, you felt, that this one didn't have? Yeah. I think the second one, uh, European Vacation, was a, a travesty, to be <laughs> perfectly honest, because it had so many celebrity cameos in it. Particu- you know, it's like a who's who of British acting yeah. in the 1980s. I mean, they've got they've got Flynn Maureen Lippmann in that film. I mean, what? <laughs> Eric Idle. You know, yeah, Eric Idle, Robbie Coltrane, you know, it's it's just ridiculous. And yet it's just not funny. It's just uh, a complete waste of time. I, mean, I believe it was directed by and also written by John Hughes, a man who should know better. Did you, know, you not chuckle, though, not... when you were a kid watching that? Did you not chuckle when they were going round the roundabout and he kept saying, there's Big Ben? Oh, yeah, OK, that was quite funny. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I just thought it was a, a massive... A, a massive disappointment after the first film, which you know I, I rate as one of these films which shouldn't work but does. But uh, no, I think we the Christmas one, uh, as we are talking about Christmas films here, is something that you can watch without any prior knowledge of the other two. So you know you're 
you're, you're always good to go. It's, it's just a nice thing to have on. It's almost a, a wallpaper film in a way. You could put it on in the background. <laughs> it's there. It's entertaining. Well, I was going to say, it's, it's, like, like, the, it's like the Christmas turkey, though, isn't it? It just sort of sits there every year. Yeah. yeah. You know, Until dry. someone eats it. <laughs> yeah, dry and sort of, you know, in a sandwich uh, at the end of the day. And you put it in the fridge and try and have it with curry sauce on it later. Yeah, it's like, it's always there. You don't really want it. You don't really wait, need wait, it. Wait, wait, back up, back up. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> we just whop out. Do, do you just, have a goose? We just whip out. We just whip out the curry sauce. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I find that amusing when you mention curry sauce. Continue. Oh. The thing is, I don't even uh, care. <laughs> <laughs> you can put just, anything just... on that turkey you want, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So what I'm trying to say is get a copy of Christmas Vacation. Smother it in sauce. <laughs> good to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Them, them's good eating. The Christmas you, movies! Do you know there was, <laughs> you know there was actually a, a... There was a sequel to Christmas Vacation. There was a sequel. Like a second? There's a, a second there, Christmas uh-huh, It's called Christmas Vacation 2. What? Uh, there, there's a sequel to it, but it doesn't have Chevy Chase in it. It's all about Randy Quaid's character. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> uh, now... Maybe I dreamt that. Can someone Google that for me since I'm recording this? Uh, yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking it up right now. Christmas now, this Vacation is, 2. And it's, this is where I, w- I wish we had like an American member who could maybe, because they probably, this is maybe like a staple. That's a good, that the, would the be an interesting thing, thing to find out, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I was just thinking, I, I will be massively disappointed if this thing does exist and it's not actually called Christmas Vacation 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Christmas Vacation 2 Cousin Eddie's Island yeah, Adventure. yeah. <laughs> That's the one. I, I can't find the, the movie links thing on the IMDb page. They redesigned it and it's horrible. IMDb is giving it 2.7 out of 10. Oh, oh it's a winner then. <laughs> it's an absolute winner. Can I just say for the record, like I, I uh, not like anyone wants to know my opinion, um, but the, the, I can't really remember much about that film. Uh, oh. I remember what you're talking about when he's up on, he's up doing the Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that probably is the bit that it, it's one of those yeah. films that I'm positive I've seen 10 times mm. and I can't really remember much about it but what I do remember although I've not seen it for years is that I remember loving the first film I thought the first vacation mm. film was brilliant but that's all I've got to say in that yeah. <laughs> the bit I always remember in the film is when uh, they go to get the tree uh, and yeah, he just sort of they... turns into this clearing and he goes, that's the one. And then there's this big <laughs> shaft of light on this supremely awesome tree. <laughs> I'll need watch again. That sounds funny. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It's like a highlight reel. I think you're right, Alan. It is like yeah. something you can just dip it's, into. Like, it, right. It's just lots of... You know, it, it's almost something for the, the YouTube crowd in a way because you could sort of break it up into sort of individual little funny bits, you know? Yeah. I should point out that in Christmas Vacation 2, uh, Eric Idle is also in that. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I still haven't found the, the movie links thing on the IMDb page, so as I can find that. The, the they've, they've, they've messed it up. They've completely... Why, why they, did they, 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 did they tinker have. with IMDb? I don't, I don't know why they did it. genuinely don't. I do believe that if you're a member, you can log in and there's an option to change it to the old board settings. Yeah. Mm. So I've heard. All right, Craig, so have you got uh, another... Christmas film that you can think of? Could it could I sort of segue into It's a Wonderful Life? No. Could we? No. Is that for you only? Yes. <laughs> okay. No, no. You can talk about it. You, you can start off with it. It's, it's, it's my favourite film of all time. So be nice. I did mention at Nightmare Before Christmas because I think it's a bit of an underdog. Whereas It's a Wonderful Life is Christmas. It's just Christmas and a big bow, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Mm. And of course, it's that wonderful take on the sort of Christmas Carol uh, story. And it's, I don't know, I just, I just pop in the film every year. I got it on Blu-ray, uh, I think last year. And uh, the, the, the photography, and it's absolutely stunning. It, it holds up uh, rather well. Who was it actually directed? It was that. Was it was that a Capra. Capra actually directed it? Yep, yep. The whole Capricorn thing. Hmm. Uh, but uh, it's just pleasant in a sort of lovely way. <laughs> <laughs> if you get my meaning. That should be on the front box. <laughs> Pleasant in a lovely way. Ah, it's hot. It, it warms the cockles. What does that mean? Most... Oh, it's everyone likes warm cockles, don't they? Oh, okay. 
But uh, I, I was I was rather uh, annoyed to see that on the the well they're, they're even advertising it this year on the the Blu-ray is a free color version. Uh, oh. And you think really? Mm-hmm. And they're showing it they're showing it in trailers and it's the color version they're actually advertising. Yeah. I think my God, has, have we got to this point where children just cannot watch things without having crayon all over it? Craig, I'm going to I'm going to tell you this is terrifying, but uh, we got there about ten years ago. I mean, people people have... just not able to people just not able to watch films because they're black and white. Ah, oh, it's ridiculous. It's horrible because black and white is is still a valid thing to do. I mean, um, I'm sure we can probably talk about it in depth in another Buncast, but. Um, but even at Christmas, I mean, the, it's the blacks and the whites and the snow, and you know, it's just it's 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 the pinnacle of Christmas. You know, it's, yeah. it's you need it in black and white. You don't want faffing about with technic colours and what have you. And, it's, mm. and uh, it's, you know, who's, who's, who decides on the colours anyway? I don't understand the the, the actual process. I, but I, I just I would, think, I would assume is it is it the old print? Is it the, is it the old colourised version? I'm pretty sure it's a recently done thing. I might be wrong. Uh, I, I'm, by no means am I an expert, but it just seems to me as if... I mean, you, I've seen bits of it and you go, yeah, if everybody looked like uh, walking Madame Tussauds characters, then I'm sure that's how it looked like on the day it was filmed. That'll be the old that, that'll be the old uh, colorization uh, process. I've, uh, I just, I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure I've seen clips of, of It's Wonderful Life in Colour before. Well, I mean, I've seen uh, Night of the Living Dead famously has a colour. Well, that's, uh, that's what I was going to say. I mean, have we not had uh, colorisation since the 1980s? You know, in a, a rather crude way. We've had colorisation you know. since uh, long before then. Oh, it's just what, what long, what's long actually, before then. What's yeah. actually getting yeah. me, though, is, I mean, this is a classic that anybody can sit down and enjoy. And they seem to be, I know, it's like marking it to, what's this term, hipster? You know the the hipster mm. people, the you know they get the new crowd in, get your kids in to watch this because it's got color. I just don't, we should preserve things. I think uh, the next still being three D. You know, but probably, I, I don't know. I kind of thought to attract the hipsters, you would have to actually have the, the film like somehow hand knitted or you know made of paper. Christ knows. But yeah, just but let's pre- just, let's preserve the classics. I, yes. I I totally agree. We just I mean talk about colorization. Like uh, I'm I'm pretty sure they were. Colorizing, uh, they were colorizing frames like either in the silent era or just. Ah well, um, yeah. I mean, you got it with individual frames. Just, uh, but, just um, after, but that, that's yeah. how they, that's how they, oh. that's how they did it. As a, as an aside, uh, a film which has gone the opposite way is uh, The Mist. Yeah. Uh, so, what's who's uh, Darabont? Right, Darabont, yeah. Yeah, Darabont, he's famously said, it says we wanted to release it in black and white and the studio wouldn't have it. So he's put it, he's put it on a DVD uh, as, as an extra. You can watch the full thing in black and white. And it's I've, I've actually seen it and it's far superior. Apart, I've heard that. I've heard that it's... I mean, I, I, I really, uh, really enjoyed that film. Um, but I've heard that especially, like, the special effects and all that just hold up far better. Yes. Uh, in black and white, but just I mean, talking about it's a wonderful life as a Christmas film. Yeah, I uh, I'm going to the uh, GFT on Christmas Eve to watch uh, it. Uh, well, I was going to mention Kirsty. the GFT shows that yeah. without fail every year at Christmas time. And um, it's Can you explain what the GFT is. Glasgow, yeah, Glasgow Film Theatre. It's just a, it's, it's just a, an old style cinema in, in Glasgow. Yeah, have you not been to the GFT? No, I'm just it's saying for other people. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. Um, I, I was worried for a moment. Though. It's an old, it's an old style Glasgow cinema that with uh, two screens that um, that basically I mean, tends to show special interest films and foreign films and uh, classic it makes films. Makes it sound like a foreign theatre. Yeah, no, but it, it's it's really lovely inside as well. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, a much more enjoyable experience than going to your multiplex. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so that's a wonderful life. Uh, I normally have that down as. <clears throat> Although I think it's probably impossible to really pick a favourite film. If I had to, it would be It's a Wonderful Life. And I also think that, I mean, Jimmy Stewart, if I had to pick my favourite actor of all time, it would be him. And Wouldn't he, if you had to pick like a movie character to be your dad, if you had to, <laughs> would you not pick Jimmy Stewart? Uh, actually, no. Would you not? I'd pick, I'd pick uh, Gregory Peck from 
and to kill. Oh, well, oh yeah, that's, that's a good show, actually. Yeah. Sorry, you have just top trumped me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apart from him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I just think that the that I mean, the film's probably been talked to death. But for me, what makes it so great? For you know, forget the fact that it's a, a fantastic story and um, that the the supporting cast are, are are incredible. Jimmy Stewart, his performance as a man at the end, you know, in absolute mm. despair. Mm. It it's it's probably about the most heart wrench one of the most heart wrenching film uh, things I've seen on film. I think well, his performance is phenomenal. The thing, yeah, the thing about that that film is it's it's the journey, and I think it evokes the spirit of uh, Christmas Carol more than most of the adaptions of a Christmas Carol I've ever seen. Yeah, because the I mean the, the original book is it's quite it goes in some quite dark places. Yeah, I'm not saying it's, it's it revels in miserable. Oh, it's a ghost story. story. Yeah, but and but it does take you to the depths of despair. I think and mm. it's a wonderful life, and the release, the end, is so joyous. Which I don't. Th- I mean, I'm a cynical man in general, so I'm told. <laughs> I ca- I cannot fail to be overwhelmed by the awesomeness of the ending. It's just lovely. It's wonderful life. I mean, it's it's definitely a a must a must watch at this time of year. Um, can I can I add in one then since I was going to talk about it's wonderful life, Craig, and you uh, jumped in. Let's let's just keep rolling. I'm loving this. Right. <clears throat> the Alistair Sims version of yes. Christmas Carol. Yes. It's phenomenal. Yes. It what it's just to me it's it's I I love there are so many versions of uh, Christmas Carol done quite a few of them I really love by the way um the Albert Finney musical is wonderful. Um, it's a, it's I, I love that take on A Christmas Carol and I love the music that's in that film as well and it's, it's so full of joy in that film. Um, and I have to say, I really love uh, Muppet Christmas Carol as well. Uh, Michael Caine's performance in that is stellar. Yeah, but <clears throat> Alistair Sims as Ebenezer Scrooge and the whole feel... I mean, the beginning of that film is... It really does capture the, the the book because let us say it is a ghost story, and the beginning of it is actually quite frightening. It's really creepy, yeah. you know, when he goes into his miserly uh, lodgings and and he he sees the horse and carriage ghost horse and carriage coming down the hall and all that. It's 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 a wonderful film, really one, and and it's the probably the only time. Where I felt Jacob Marley was really frightening when he when he when he came in to speak who to was, him, I it was uh, really scary. Who was Marley again? It was uh, was that one of the Redgraves? Was it was, uh, Michael Horton? Was it? No, that's the thing. I th- I thought it was Michael Horton, but uh, I'm sure we went and checked it up, and you'd be, you'd swear blind it was him, but I don't think it was. Well. Check it up. Someone Google it. Are you googling? Pass his finger first. Oh, my thing stopped. Oh no. I think we've lost Alan. Alan. Yes. <laughs> oh, give me a hug. Uh, yeah, cyber hug. No, that sounds a bit uh, dodgy. Well, uh, <laughs> Alan, have you seen? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go down the road of asking you. Have you seen? Have you seen uh, <laughs> I'd prefer that you didn't. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, Alan hates Christmas. <laughs> He's not watched <laughs> any Christmas films. No, um, I, again, this one's a, a must-watch, Alan. It's uh, it's not it's mm. no it's nowhere near as well known as It's a Wonderful Life, but it's it's fantastic. And Alistair Sims' performance, he was he was a stellar actor. Jacob Marley, Marley's Ghost, Michael Horton. Was it Michael Horton? Yeah, I'd say. Nice one because I I I was adamant to my to my dad about that because he he watches that film every Christmas. That that was Michael Horton. He was like, no, it's not. So I'm I'm going to correct him. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, what did you think of the film, Craig? It is. Uh, I think totally. It's, it's it's the most faithful representation I've seen. Uh, if I could 
Veer on something which I've seen recently, which was the uh, Robert Zemeckis one. Yeah. The uh, the Jim Carrey starred one. Now there's an unusual film. Yeah. In that it's it's populated by great performances, and yet now pe- people who know the performers will probably know that I'm a big fan of Beowulf, uh, the the last motion capture thing that right. uh, Zemeckis did. This seemed to me like a step back, and it seemed to me like he was trying to. Straddle the, the the classic story whilst trying to put some sort of spin on it, which was just a little bit too surreal. Now there are moments in the book, if I recall, I mean, it's been a long time since I read the book, where, like I say, it does go a little bit, uh, a little bit off kilter. But I'd, there's there's some imagery in, in the Zemeckis film which is pure technical astonishment, mm-hmm. which I don't think was really necessary, and it's. I think I think you're right. I think uh, the the look of the Alistair Sim version it evokes the spirit of the period fantastically well, <laughs> uh, and I think it's something that Zemeckis missed the boat on. I would lo- I, I don't think has there been a, a recent cinematic adaption that's just been live action. As it, it seems to me that it's, it's been a long time. Mm. Scru- well, I, well that's, of course, that's uh, that's an alternate take was, on it. Was that not in the 1980s? Yeah, I was about 1989. Because I mean, the the Muppet one was 92. So oh, yeah, right. the Muppet the Muppets one's probably the last. I'm talking and, about. Like, actually, there's one with Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> as, uh, and the, oh. there's one with Patrick Stewart as well. As I do Stewart, think I do think Scrooge. I've seen. Yeah, I think that might be a television. Uh, it, it, it may very well have been. I know that Patrick Stewart uh, did oh, yeah, a one-man show. 19, 19, 1999, Christmas Carol, Patrick Stewart. He did a one-man show uh, on Broadway, which was quite famous, I think, over in America, where he, he, he did the entire story on his own. Um, but I've seen clips of it. It's did, actually did, did he very, play all the characters? Yeah, I don't did, know how that did, must actually work. He did actually I, play all the characters. I could see him making a fantastic Scrooge. Yeah. Which is funny because I, I couldn't see Jim... When I first heard about Jim Carrey playing Scrooge, my first thought was, Ugh. And then, <laughs> then I started watching the film and then I thought, Ugh. And then, and then the film continued and then I went, Ugh. <laughs> So, I mean, his his performance in it is actually really great. I, um, I would love I would love to have seen it in live action. Do you want to know something, Craig? What's that? I actually kind of enjoyed that film. Wow. Go tell me, Mark. <laughs> wow. Oh, hey, Mark. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, it's actually quite highly rated. According to the IMDb, it's got 7.0. Oh, that's the mob for you. Um, yeah. No, I, I actually, I, I, uh, I think it's because I'm increasingly going into the cinema expecting nothing because the bar is so low now. Mm. And I went into that, you know, Kirsty really wanted to see it. Kirsty's my girlfriend for those that listen. And, you know, we went, we went, you know, so I went along with her, and uh, bizarrely, she didn't like it because she found there were bits of it that were kind of too frightening. Yes. And they, they maybe did go a little bit over the top in a few points of it, but as I said to, to my girlfriend, I said to her, you know, it's as it a ghost story, you know, mm-hmm. which a lot of people forget, but. Um, yeah, Suppose they, you'll have, you'll, you don't have seen it in the 3D then, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I've just watched it on uh, a DVD. Now, did you not think that this dead eye syndrome that seems to be a feature of these mm. computer-generated films was particularly prevalent in that? Yeah, but I, I'm not sure. I've only seen Beowulf once. I saw it. Again, I saw it in 3D. It was the first 3D film, or modern 3D film, that I went to see. And um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would agree that it was a step back. Um, it is getting to the point where you almost, you kind of almost think, what's the point of, of them having animators? Hmm. Um, just with the level of mo- uh, motion capture that's going on, but I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. It's the only 3D film uh, that I've actually can say that I came out quite happy that I watched it. Uh, I, I, I've seen a few films in 3D now, and it's the only one that I kind of enjoyed. I mean, it, it's kind of silly. I mean, they they put in action scenes and 
you know, because it's a film that doesn't know what it wants what to be. What sort of an action scene can you really have in a Christmas Carol? And Scrooge, with it? Scrooge with an Uzi. <laughs> Well, that's what that's what I'm saying now, and that's that's to me. He's trying to sort of satisfy the uh, maybe the book crowd, and maybe try to update it for uh, the, the, the children, you know. And I just, the, the children of the night. Yeah. By the way, with Jim Jim Carrey's accent in that film, I don't know what it is, but I found it enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> it's after so like a South African nation. There is a, a a lot of people have played Scrooge, and they've they've definitely put a twang of the Scottish accent in there. I think uh, he was he was going a bit uh, sort of into the Netherlands at one point, though, wasn't it? He was kind of <laughs> yeah. But I think I think there was a little bit in there. But do you know where I think that comes from? Is I think that comes from when you listen to Alistair Sims. Yeah. Prospect. Doing it, and he's, that's how people think of how he, Scrooge talks. He is possibly the the prototype for all Scrooges to come. Yeah. So anyway, um, Alan, you were mentioning earlier on you were talking about Bad Santa. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I got a bit distracted. I just found the Kelsey Grammer version of Christmas Carol. And you started uh, watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost I'm almost tempted to because the gather that. Uh, Marley's Ghost is played by Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you don't want to see that. Uh, the the g- salad and scrambled eggs. <laughs> Bob Cratchit's Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> Being racist. Uh, racism. That fine Christmas tradition. So anyway, uh, Bad Santa. Yeah, Bad, bad Santa. Yeah, well... Again, I think this is possibly one of the kind of achievements of films that you go into not really expecting much out of. Because uh, I think uh, when I saw this at first, I believe it was uh, me and you, Craig, that went to see it at the cinema. Yes, yes, I do recall. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. And it, it's kind of a strange one because you almost expect it to be sort of typical kind of gross out. Yeah, kind of teen comedy. It's like, it's like the older cast in this because you know the the titular character being played by Billy Bob Thornton here, but it does almost feel like it's playing to the gross out crowd in a way. But I feel like it kind of rises above that because it doesn't really it doesn't really milk the kind of um, more gruesome aspect of the the humor, which is you know mostly played in kind of bad taste. It just kind of presents it as is. You know, there's a sort of very pitiable fact about this, you know, and that it, I think it's a film that kind of, is kind of funny because it gets a certain desperation that you could almost uh, associate with Christmas as well. You know, there is a kind of, uh, I feel, sort of grimmer side to the season, and this is a, a film that kind of plays to that in a way. It's kind of a, a kind of Christmas gone horribly wrong, but, you know, not in a massively comic way. It's kind of a. It's kind of the wit nail and eye of Christmas films in a way, I think. It is. I think it's like the, the perfect antidote to uh, mm. all the Christmas cheer. Mm. Uh, there's kind of quiet desperation about it. There's a great performances again. Uh, mm. and I, I could even see Billy Bob Thornton being a great Scrooge. Yeah. Yeah, I really yeah. imagine it, yeah. Uh, it, from what I recall, I mean, I haven't seen it since uh, we've actually been at the cinema, but I do, I do remember some great comic set pieces. Uh, I remember a good performance from from uh, Bernie Mac. Yeah, very, yeah. Sort very of, good. It was, is he uh, the, the, the is he, is he like I think the he's the store, 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 store security. Yeah. He's store John security. Ritter. John Ritter, can... John Ritter runs a place, and Bernie yeah. Mac's mm. the uh, store security. I think. God bless mm. them. They're both not with us anymore. I know. But, uh, uh, well, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> I just remember them being, you know, kind of at the top of their game. I mean, John Ritter sort of gave a very honest performance in it. Yeah. Uh, as a sort of sufferable, sort of mopish type, that, you know, trying to keep a handle on everything. And uh, I, I, I felt that, yeah, it's it's success is in its favour. Mm. It really does push the boat out on things, which I think you're right, though, Alan. It doesn't reach that gross out level. But I yeah, think I it, think it. So. No, I, I think it reaches a sort of level of. Uh, I suppose the word would be cynicism. Mm. Of course, I mean the the, the most uh, talked about aspect of that film, though, is the ending about yeah. whether or not it's appropriate to the material that came before it. I was uh, just yeah. I was just going to say that I was going to say that when I watched that, and I did enjoy Bad Santa, but when I did mm. watch that, I felt like 
uh, I'd, I'd love to have read an early draft of the script because I really wondered whether that was it was like the ending from a different film, mm. Mm. and I wondered I if it know. was if it if it was an ending that had been tacked on. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it put me off that much. In a way, I kind of felt it it was sort of necessary because it does kind of let you off the hook in a way. If it wasn't, if it didn't end the way it does, it might just be too intensely you know it might make the cynicism come across as too intense and just too downcast that the whole thing would just be you know, kind of incredibly depressing by by comparison i felt that i felt as if it was almost a comment on it being a christmas film mm. and that you had to have that sort of we talked mm. about it's a wonderful life and the, the release at the end of it it was almost a sort of play on that and i think had it gone the dark route it would be firmly in this sort of cult corner type. I mean, it is a cult film, but it would be firmly mm. there. And I don't, because people are starting to talk about it now in terms of it being an absolute Christmas classic. And I think, given maybe another decade, yeah. I think you'll probably see it top in a lot of lists. And I don't think you would have that if you just had overriding darkness. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I think, I, I think you're right about if it had ended on too much of a downbeat, then mm. yeah. It, it, that in itself may have jarred with it being a Christmas film, but I think I think they could have handled it that handled it differently. They could it could have been a happy medium between the two because I felt like it was almost sickly sweet the way they tried to do it, but it just mm. it was it, it just didn't feel like it worked within the context of the film and like i say i enjoyed i enjoyed the rest of it i found it very funny and um and uh i thought billy bob thornton was great in it uh like you say john ritter and bernie mack there's a scene in that film where and i was in hysterics where john ritter is in, a, in bernie mack's office talking to him Asking him to keep an eye on Billy Bob Thornton and asking about his, uh, just just to keep an eye on him in case he's up to something. And Bernie Mac is eating an orange. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I remember that. It is. I don't know how you can make eating an orange <laughs> funny, but uh, it really did. It was hysterical, hysterical. Just the way he's eating it. Um, but I kind of, I mean, did you not? Did you feel? Uh, uh, well, this is kind of what I felt. There was, was the the Bernie Mac character. The conclusion to, to his character, I wasn't very happy with that either. Mm. It was kind of like a complete anticlimax. It's like th- the film's punctuated yeah. with those scenes with John Ritter and Bernie Mac talking, and then all of a sudden they don't really do anything with Bernie Mac's character. Well, again, like you were saying, it could be the. Uh... The hallmark that it was redrafted at some point. Maybe they, you know, they were going to go a different way with it originally. Yeah. Did John Ritter? No, no, he didn't die while he was filming. It was while he was filming uh, Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Daughter, wasn't it? Mm. The TV series. I believe so. I haven't seen. There's, there's an alternate cut of it uh, called Badder Santa, <laughs> uh, which I don't know what that might be like. Maybe they give that a watch. Yeah. Let me check it out. But. Uh, more. Uh, yeah, I think it's mostly more, uh, yeah, mostly more language. I think. Oh no, it's, yeah, I think it's just more extreme by the looks of things. Mostly more sentences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mostly more sentences. Well, let's go with that. So, um, I think that's us about at the hour mark, gentlemen. So, yeah. um, any other films anyone wants to quickly mention before we sign off for Christmas? Uh, the Michael. No, Keaton, I haven't seen any other ones. The Michael Keaton classic, Jack Frost. That <laughs> that whole-hearted family approach to you know the death of your father, <laughs> coming back as the spirit of a snowman, and yeah, yeah absolute. And yet that family. seems to get trotted out every year. Can it? What a load it's of. It's a strange thing. Can I? Can I then segue nicely into this snowman? No. Okay. Yeah. Please don't. I, 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 I'm really, I, I I'm really love, not a fan of. Really, uh, I love that cartoon. That is wonderful. No, it's it's, it's very good. It's very nice. Mm. Was there a sequel to that? Yeah, uh, Snowman's Revenge. No, there, yeah, kind of. It was about Santa. 
That's what I was going to say. That's the only yeah. Raymond Briggs thing that I actually like. I do quite like the Santa one, but uh, the Snowman and When the Wind Blows, particularly When the Wind Blows, didn't really like them. I remember that had a huge effect on me. Uh, not When the Wind Blows, Santa. No, uh, <laughs> When the Wind Blows had a, a big effect on me when I watched it when I was younger, but yeah. I've not watched it for years and years, so uh, I'm getting on a bit, you know, so okay, forget uh, I would like to give another shout to uh, Scrooge, the uh, Bill Murray version yeah. of uh, Christmas Carol. I think there's some good set pieces in that again. Uh, some good one line. I know it does it does fall slightly at the end. I think it sort of goes into the whole. He's talking to the camera and the audience, and so sort of, there's a high element of cheese there. But while, whilst it's on, it's a good ride. I, I, Interesting. I love uh, Scrooge. According to the IMD, according to the IMDb, Bill Murray was in line to play the main character in Bad Santa. He was going to have the Billy Bob Thornton role. Could see it. Yeah. Could totally see it. Definitely. But I think, uh, talking about Scrooge, there's so many hilarious moments in that film. Uh, I think I think Scrooge does have a, a good bit of heart to it, you know. I mean, I don't think it's a Christmas classic, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's it does really have its place. And, you know, when you're talking about Bill Murray as well, Groundhog Day feels very much like a Christmas film to me. Yes. Oh, that's that's a fair point, actually. Yeah, you know, I hadn't even thought of that. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because it's um, that's a holiday that we we don't really have. Well, you know, do, do they have it anywhere except America? What Groundhog Day? I I don't, I, I I know nothing about it. Well, is it not something about how uh, you know? I know what they see in the, the film. Comes out and yeah, but is that not you know? It, it, I mean, am I not? Is that not some sort of a holiday in the States? I believe it is, yes. Yeah, yeah but I it definitely feels sort of Christmassy, that film. Mm. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know, maybe it feels more Christmassy to us because we don't have that holiday, yeah. you know, maybe that's... Uh, well, let's find so. out. Uh, Groundhog Day is a holiday celebrated on February 2nd, so it's still mm. within that sort of winter period. And yeah, another cool. honourable mention, uh, Edward Scissorhands. Now, it seems to be, it seems to be this thing with Tim Burton. Yeah. As we mentioned, mm. he produced Nightmare Before Christmas, and you've just mentioned Batman Returns, and then we've got Edward Scissorhands, which I totally agree with. Is it just because of the winter elements in it? Is that is that, is that what makes? I think Christmas he. Movie? I think he's. I think. No, I think I think with Burton, he he, he just. Is he, he just trying to it. set every film that he makes at Christmas? <laughs> Well, I don't know if it, it sets his visual style off very well. I think no, it's, no, it's, true. it's it's I guess what I was saying about the black and white mm. uh, thing. It's mm. it, his 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 design style is very much you know the the black gothic, and then you get it uh, contrasted with the sort of whites of the ice and the snow and all that. Mm. I think it works in in his favour very well. Uh, but yeah, it's a great that's a great pick. Uh, mm. I do, do and, enjoy them. And uh, Gremlins, anyone? How could we have forgotten Gremlins? <laughs> oh. I don't know. Was that again a re-release or something? I thought I read that somewhere. They keep threatening a third one. Uh, but I don't know. What would say? A good idea, about What idea? was the name of What was the name of the actress again? Phoebe. Was it Phoebe, Phoebe Case? Phoebe Case. Yeah. I had such a crush on her when I was a wee boy. Like actually, I think, I think yeah. one of one of the first crushes I ever had, I think, was on her. And the second, the second one was on uh, Billy. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> yeah, she she was gorgeous. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I've just uh, segued. I'm really, I'm never going to drink wine again when we do another podcast. Um, any other, any, uh, any other? Drink, drink whiskey instead. Any other honourable mentions? Yeah. I will say, uh, not any film in particular, but I will say about the type of film. Uh, the types of people we're mentioning in these films have a good sort of central. Yeah, they've got gravitas in their performances, say like a, a Scrooge or, or you know the Jimmy Stewart style Everyman. These modern Christmas films, of which there are many, yeah, uh, you know these this, wasn't Ben Affleck usually Aff- starring Tim Allen. Yeah, Tim Allen or, or Ben Affleck, I'm sure was, has been in one or two of them, and they just lack anything. Do you not mm. think though that they are they are the it, the, chi- the the children <clears throat> of a certain film that we've already mentioned? Christmas vacation. I I don't know because the the one that always springs well maybe some of the later ones there's that Christmas with the cranks yeah. and all that but the one that yeah, springs yeah. to my mind the most heavily from the Tim Allen stable would be the Santa Claus, 
And I remember going to see that on a school trip back in the day when the first one came out. And I remember thinking even then that it was a really terrible film. <laughs> and how that has now managed, I think, two sequels, if not three, is something that I can't comprehend on any level whatsoever. They should CG and Wilson behind a, a <laughs> wood fence and all the I scenes that would work. That, that would do. No, it's just that I don't even have a thing against Tim Allen because I actually quite like uh, Galaxy Quest. I thought he was quite good in that. That's a fantastic film, uh, Galaxy Quest. Yeah, fantastic. Completely acted out of his. Uh, completely out acted by Alan Rickman, obviously, but you know he was quite good in that. He had shot the down though. Not... Yeah, oh, totally. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What's that film with uh, Dudley Moore? I was about to say that. That's Santa yeah, Claus the movie. It's when that when that. Oh, oh, that, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is that not set at Christmas though? Or am I just I think you're right. I think it might be actually. But Santa Claus the movies, because I was about once you mentioned the Santa Claus, I was going to say what about Santa Claus the movie? That is a strange yeah. film. Now, when that film kicks off, I, as a child, I always remember being enthralled by the idea that there had been a previous Santa. And I remember that that there's that movie. There's a scene where the, the, the new bloke comes in and he's looking around and there's all these elves kicking about and what have you. And then the the, the, the Santa comes down and he's this old wizened man yeah. who's the, the most f- frail being you've ever seen. And I believe he's dressed in blue. I th- I th- it's been a long time since I've seen it, but it is ringing a bell. And it's, I, it's... I only remember like you know very small amounts of that from when I was a kid, and I was convinced it was a horror film, to be perfectly honest. It's a, it's mm. a strange film as far as I remember. But it's just one of those that you pick out moments from your childhood and I always remember that, that image of the old man who was the previous Santa, you know, and it being this sort of lineage thing, which yeah. I thought was quite cool. But uh, is, is, who's, is Dudley Moore, is John Lithgow in that one? Yes. Yes, and doing John, his John Lith- yeah, he's the villain. Yeah. I need to give that another watch because that, that is a weird... It weird used movie. to always be shown on Christmas, but it's not really now. Mm. I mean, uh, but another... another uh, when you're talking about modern Christmas films, I agree on the whole, but I actually thought Elf was pretty good. Oh, I never actually saw that. That was the one with uh, Will Ferrell? Yeah. I think if it, if Will Ferrell hadn't been in it, it would have probably just have been uh, well, fairly run. And, and, and James Caan as well. If I, if I hadn't had the two of them, it would have probably been a, a run-of-the-mill film. I but, think uh, I think. I think. Was right. there in fact a... Was there in fact a scene where you know James Caan gets off in a drive-by shooting? Yes, because that would have made the film for me. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that, that, sorry. That's an example of a film, though, which is it's one of these Christmas films that you can t- it's it's totally slapped together in a sort of you know very rudimentary way. But again, it's hung on essential performance, which is quite endearing. Yeah, it's and a it's a vehicle for Will Ferrell. I don't think there's any yeah doubt about that, and it does very much feel that way. But I I don't know. I just uh. It's not as good as the sort of older Christmas films that were being made, but I think it it has a bit of heart to it, I think. It's got something there. For sure. So, so I think I just noticed that Sheriff John Bonnell is in Bad Santa. Who? Is he? Sure, yeah, that's, Hi, that's, I'm Sheriff John Bonnell. Yeah. Welcome um, to oh, World's Oh, so he Great is. Place. That's right. He turns up at the end. <laughs> that's the right, only yeah. place he's gone is a penitentiary. <laughs> The uh, county jail. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so are we are we done, chaps, for Christmas, and probably for 2010? It's a sobering thought. What's our next one cast on? Uh, Billy Zen. Yeah, an entire <laughs> two-hour special Zenathon. The increasingly poor decisions of Billy Zen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. Well. All I would like to say is most of the films we've mentioned, I think, are, are Christmas classics, and uh, I would just like to wish everybody listening a, a, a Merry Christmas, especially if they've listened to all of this. Hmm. Dear God. <laughs> you're supposed to both... You're not getting in the Christmas spirit. You're supposed to you're supposed to both go, Merry Christmas. Shall we do it together, Alan? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Just One, two, three. Merry... Oh, Merry you Christmas. Jesus oh. Christ. Do you not usually count down instead of up? <laughs> yeah, I was going to think of Well, what do you want me to do? Three, two, one, then? Yeah. Right. Three, two, one. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
That was that was that was pretty pathetic. Uh, Christmas yeah, movies. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I'm now going to use that as a ringtone on my phone. Actually. <laughs> right. Well, we hope um, for me and Shifty Bun, we hope you all have a great Christmas and a happy New Year. Silence. <laughs> <laughs>